Welcome to step five, use good password management. We start by giving you an example of a good password policy. Now you can adjust it to meet the needs of your company. The password policy here would be pretty much middle of the road. So if you need very, very tight security, you could make the uh, requirements of the password policy more strict or if you wanted, you could make it looser. It's really depending upon the level of security that you need. So the first criteria in any case would be a minimum password length of eight characters. The password must contain upper and lower case characters, at least one non-alphanumeric character, and at least one number. The password must be changed at least every 90 days. When a password is changed, any of the previous passwords may not be reused. Passwords from default accounts must be changed or removed. When a user leaves your company, their accounts and password must be disabled or removed. Password logging, that is success or failure, should be implemented. And users must never share their passwords. Failure to abide by the above defeats the purpose of having passwords in the first place. Enforcing password policy is relatively easy as this functionality is built into most operating systems. Uh, anyone that's done any kind of admin uh, work with uh, Windows certainly uh, has used this feature. Now, enforcement prevents end users from failing to follow the password policy. So, as we've discussed before, end users will often do the most convenient thing rather than the most secure thing. So, it's much, much easier for them to just choose a simple dictionary word and never change it. Therefore, we must enforce it to make sure that they follow good policy. Also, most operating systems allow for password logging, and that's probably something that you want to enable. Now, you should realize that no OS can completely enforce a password policy. It can't prevent users from sharing passwords or writing a password on a sticky note behind a monitor. This sort of thing needs to be included in the company's security policy and in end user education. Realize that strong passwords are not vulnerable to brute force dictionary attacks, which is one of the main reasons why you want to use them. If data is encrypted and protected by a password, there are two ways for a black hat to try and view the data unencrypted. The first is to try to break the algorithm or the encryption algorithm. The wireless algorithm WEP, WEP, is relatively easy to crack with tools readily available on the internet. So any admin that knows what he's doing would never use WEP, but if they did, that would be, this, uh, that would be easy to crack the algorithm. Now, many algorithms such as AES, which is the current government uh, standard, is virtually impossible to crack the algorithm. In these cases, black hats will use a dictionary attack. A dictionary attack is a type of brute force attack that uses a dictionary file with literally millions of words in it. The attack simply tries each password one at a time until it finds the correct password. Depending upon the speed of your computer, this could be done uh, relatively quick, quickly. Here's an example of how weak passwords can take an otherwise strong security and weaken it, allowing hackers to compromise. Wi-Fi WPA2 is considered extremely difficult to break the algorithm. But using Kali Linux, which is freely available, does not cost any money it's because it's, it's open source, uh, a reasonably savvy hacker can launch a dictionary attack and crack a, a dictionary password in, say, five minutes. The same hacker 
would be stopped cold by a good password. It doesn't matter how strong your armor is when you have a crack in the armor where the opponent can plunge his sword. That's the end of step five. We will see you in the next lecture, step six.